How's it going, everybody? We're going to talk about extra man offense. To be a great man up team, you have to be able to pass the ball well. You got to be able to pass it off the carry, pull passes, skip passes, drag passes where you're on the back pedal or you're throwing it or throwing it behind the back, reverse pull passes when you've got pressure, skip passes through the defense, lever passes with no follow through and look offs, behind the back passes that are hard to read, wall passes where you throw it inside, underhand passes under sticks, no cradle passing, wind up passing. You do not want to be switching hands on man up unless you're under severe pressure. And let's look at some highlights from Division One lacrosse. Look at how hard they're throwing the ball. They're carrying, they're throwing back. They're looking off a skip pass, one more, wind up, drag, step in the gap, wind up, pass, and then a beautiful screenshot. Another throwback, a wall pass inside, back down, an underhand pass, rip through the defense. You got to have these pieces and parts. It's not about the X's and the O's. Watch how fast Ohio State bangs this ball, one after the other, carrying, throwing, dragging here's your back pedal drag or crease roll off a wind up pass another wind up pass and then a quick release shot this is these are the parts the more you watch it the more you see a lot of the same things a throwback a throw ahead a wind up a fake a throw a fake a fake a draw a dump a draw a dump a wind up a skip screenshot But how do you teach all this stuff? We're going to show you. Watch how hard DU throws the ball. And, and then watch this deceptive pass. Open up, look it off, lever. That's a quick release, no follow through type of look off pass. Now this player gets pressured a little bit. And then watch this pass. No cradle, skip pass, quick stick. That's how you move the ball. You got to be a great shooting team to be a great man up team. You got to have an array of shots, screenshots around the defender approaching you, double fake finishes, face dodge finishes, low high wind ups with pull shots and leaners, high low wind ups with anti leaners and elevators. And the inside shots you get off a wall pass and a quick release turnaround shots. We have to work on these, but we have to identify them and understand what they are. Watch this screenshot. There's no way a goalie's going to save that. They can't see it. Here's another great example of a screenshot. Look at this. How are you going to save that? You should look for your screenshot at every opportunity. Here, a really nice wall pass shot. Turn around, low to high, really difficult to, to guard. Watch this skip pass to a double fake finish. You're going to see two fakes off this finish on the skip pass down to Matt Rambo. Fake high, low, high. It also happens to be near, far near. Unbelievable finishes. Faking is such a big part of man up play. You gotta fake the rotations out of your wind up. Look back fakes, behind the back fakes. You gotta be able to drag and pump passes. You gotta be able to pump ahead. You gotta be able to fake behind the back, behind. The more you can fake, the more you're gonna screw up the defense. Watch Marquette fake passes. It's a thing of beauty, the way they fake their passes to screw up rotations. Watch this right here. Fake. Pass, fake, rotation, screwed. Skip pass, success. Watch this fake with a little drag and a look back. No, next time. He's going to fake that pass next time. I jumped the gun on this, but that's a good segue into this. Watch how he fakes it up the field, looks off his shot. He's looking things off. you got to look everything off. Look at this. He takes a quick look just enough to get his hands free to release the shot. We're going to get a third look at this. He quickly takes a pause, a quick look up, and gets his shot off. Uh, this clip of Stanwick, watch this. He fakes so many times that nobody comes and plays him. It's actually incredible how often the guy faked it. That fake there, this fake right there, the look off. You see the head turn very subtly, turns his head. You gotta have perfect positioning on the perimeter. You gotta step in for a one more shot. You gotta pinch the pipes. The slot player has to find that soft spot. The low outlets needs to be a threat, but open to, to be a feeder or an adjacent pass. The wing shooter needs to step in. The perimeter, no hand switches. The crease man who's being locked, seal the rotations. And we all gotta push and pull together. You're all on a string. That's what positioning is all about. 
So watch this, a little two-man action here, the pass up, and then the perfect step in. That's a step in example. Here, DU is just masterful at sneaking. They got a little four-man rotation going on. Look at the low guys sneaking on the, on the pipes, really get on, getting underneath their guys. Look how, look how much they sneak under. But then the ball side guy gets open so he can feed while the backside low guy sneaks in. It's just beautiful across. Here's another sneak on the backside pipe. That's the double fake finish from Rambo we saw before. You got to sneak. The backside low has got to sneak. Watch the DU player in the slot here. Watch him find that soft spot. Watch him step and watch the drags and the angles and the way that uh, the Denver player is able to get it inside. It's a thing of beauty. Here you're going to notice that Notre Dame is pressuring and DU's, their positioning is great. They get wide and they're not going to switch hands unless all of a sudden somehow they run into trouble, in which case, yeah, they're going to switch all right, but they're going to otherwise always play with their strong hand on man up. There's not that many movements, but you got to understand all of them and practice them. The two-man shallow cuts, the three-man rotations, a couple different four-man rotations. There's even five-man. you got roll-offs, X roll-offs, wing roll-offs, top roll-offs, single cuts and double cuts that open up players behind you and then seal players. Ohio State's great about this. Watch the double cut here. Two guys cut, they draw players down, they swing the ball, beautiful little drag, and then step in, hands-free, rip. This is a two-man carry shallow cut that opens up the top step-down shooter. Here you're going to watch Notre Dame with a three-man rotation behind. The two guys behind the three-man rotation. It occupies three players. Then they kick it up to a two-man shallow cut that you can see is opening stuff up. Here's three-man rotation on the wing. Kick it up. Everyone's – the slot man's getting open. Let's do another three-man. They occupy three players, and it leaves two to cover three on the backside. That's why those rotations work so well. Here, DU with a really nice – carry, roll off, backside roll off, ball side sneak, one more, kick it up, step in, leaner, first shot, and a score. There's a wing roll off, carry up, wing roll off, Terps in a five man, throw it inside. And the ring roll off, the X roll off, it creates stuff. This is like the Syracuse rotation. It's a four-man rotation. You're going to notice that there's four men moving, wing, X, crease, and backside. You're going to see four men move again, wing, sneak, crease, and backside. And here's where we see that, that beautiful double fake finish again. But that's the classic look Syracuse runs all the time. Ohio State's running the top. They're running a, 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 a top roll off. They're in a 1 3 2, a 1 4 1, carry it, back pedal, drag it to a 1 3 2, cause them to rotate. They're playing a four man rotation. They can't keep up with it. Hopkins does a lot of this. This is a push pull. This is no rotation. You got a good cut down, but everybody, when you start pushing aside, it makes it real tough on the defense. The concepts, five man. It's the soft spot is inside. Four man beat the rotation. So watch DU here. They got a double cut. Carolina's in a five man, and they're able to find that soft spot because it's a five man rotation. It means that the crease is going to be the soft spot. In a locked crease with a four man rotation, you got to try to beat the form, beat the rotation, either through quicker ball movement or through skip passes. So you're going to see they're able to just beat the rotation with their ball movement. A skip pass will do it too. So let's talk about some quick passing drills. Crank passing. You want to be able to throw the ball hard like these college teams? Throw the ball hard in practice. Crow hop, rip it. Catch it, get used to it. Crow hop, rip it. Underhand, overhand. You don't have to work on your weak hand. 
but you got to be able to throw this ball really, really hard. You know, if you look at a lot of the rotations, they're all circular in nature. Working on throwing the ball in the circle passing drill is an incredible way, whether you're going sticks to the inside or sticks to the outside. Look back, face dodge. Look back, face dodge. Bring it back, move it. These are the types of passes that people have to be able to do. You got to be able to throw the ball back on a pull pass. You got to be able to fake and face dodge and backhand pass. This drill will help you be slicker on your man up. Let's get into shooting. Got to work on your screenshots. I stress this all the time. Get tennis balls, shoot it around your man. Don't kill your defenders or your goalie. You got to use tennis balls for these drills. But if you're not a good screenshot shooter, you're not going to have as good of a man up team. And it's going to set up your dodges a little bit. When people get scared of getting hit, you've got to shoot screenshots. You've got to shoot them hard and not be afraid to hurt people. Low, high, wind up. Probably the most important shooting skill I've ever learned. Low, high, wind up. Low, high, crow hop. It gives you a really nice hesitation in your shot stroke. You can kind of see how it loads up. Low, high, rip. Right? Low, high, hammer. And you can manipulate the goalie and freeze him. Your face dodge finish might be the most exciting new technique I've learned. I started watching box players, watch how the Carolina player face dodge is over and then reaches far. What I've learned about this finish is the goalies cannot keep up. When you face dodge over, they can't keep up with your reach. It's faster to face dodge and come back over than it is to fake and come back and reset. I started watching NLL players. They do this all the time, and it sets up their reach, their five-hole shot, as well as their twister. And it's just a quicker way because when you face dodge over and you come back, the goalies cannot keep up with your reach, which means they have to overplay it. They got to jump over it, and it opens up five-hole shots and near-side shots. Watch Lyle. The threat of his face dodge reach means the goalie has to come off the pipe. So this face dodge finish is not hard to learn. It's actually quite natural. And we're gonna be able to teach our kids how to do this. This is a phenomenal shooting drill for finishing and in tight shooting. We're using lacrosse balls and tennis balls, but we're throwing the ball really hard. One of the hardest things to do is just catch and then finish. So if you, work on this drill and then you say all right everybody we want to face dodge over and then reach or face dodge over and then twister or we want to be able to double fake finish and twister these are the kinds of drills that'll help you with your finishing big time but you got to shoot a lot if you want to be a great finishing team you better shoot the ball a ton here we're about to do the same four corner diagonal shooting drill, but now we're working on it off a drag. Why? Because we've got to be able to drag on man up. We've got to be able to drag down and still fire a ball and then double fake finish, twister. We've got to be able to drag and fire the ball. We did drags off this. We did carries off this. We did drag and behind the backs. We did crow hops. We're working on all of the different passes and we're leading it right into shots and finishes. If you want to be a great man up team, you got to do a ton of three on two varieties. Pass down, pick down, throw back when they follow you, one more across. These are all the same skills that you're seeing these guys at the college level doing. Pass down, pick away, slip, feed the slip. That's how you work, that's how you work on that. Pass down, pick away. Really nice heads up, pass down, pick down. Got picked up, step into the gap, fake, throw, one more, one more again. This is the type of passing that anybody wants to have on their man up team. There are a million versions of man ups. You can do them from behind, carry, throwback, fade. This is the same kind of stuff that happens on man up, and you got to be able to do it against poles. You got to be able to handle the ball, carry, throwback, cut in. All of these man ups are gonna prime you for all the different looks that you might wanna have when you're playing in real man up situations. A little reverse pull pass, look inside, and you gotta finish. Here we got three on twos from the wings. It's called three on two push pull. You can also do this where you cycle and cut. 
but you can see this really simulates the side of a one, three, two, the drags, the fakes, the step-ins. You have to run four on three drills to build up to your man up, man down. Let's watch these Canadians, the way they move the ball. First of all, they're doing a great job of no cradling, looking for skips, looking for reversals, looking for one mores. If you can move the ball this quickly, you're gonna be a pretty good man up team. But there are some drills that you can do within this four on three that I wanna talk about now. First, I want this player to be able to drag down left-handed and then throw the ball across to the top righty shooter. I want the same thing to happen on the other side. Down, up, drag, and throw it back across. I want the ball to go down, up, drag, across. And then down, up, drag, across. That is a motion and a ball movement drill I like to do before we score. So I'll say, hey guys, let's get that twice on each side. Down, up, drag, across. Down, up, drag, across. Do it one more time. Throw it down and up, drag, across. Down, up, drag, throw it across. Meanwhile, we're gonna have our low players pinching and sneaking every single time. So not only are we gonna get our ball movement, but if the ball is here and we're dragging, we've got this guy sneaking in. We saw how important that was in a lot of our videos. You need to be able to do that really well. We gotta be able to practice our carry and our shallow cuts out of all situations. So this is our little Buckeye buildup. Out of the two on one, we're just playing draw and dump, fake and finish fake feed and finish. But once we get into three on twos, we move the ball off the ground and then we're going straight into shallow cuts every single time. You saw how many carries and passes to be able to throw it under sticks, carry and throw back. You gotta be able to do this and to be able to play your ground ball scrambles with more motion is good for both sides of the ball. You saw the fake, you saw the carry, you saw the shallow, you saw the dump down, another shallow, a quick underhand feed, that's good ball movement, and that's how you ought to train your players. Five-on-four drills are incredible because they teach you the basics of what a six-on-five is going to look like. So let's take a look at this one and talk about a couple things that you can do within your five-on-fours. First of all, we can, if the ball is with this player, we can carry – and shallow in this drill and it becomes if this guy sneaks in it becomes a great play that you saw a few of the division one teams doing but you're not limited to carrying it there you could carry up the wing and shallow down the wing while these players were all uh, finding their spots you could carry up this wing and shallow down that so you can do it all over the field but those carries and shallows are going to be really good for your man up and you can do them in these drills and it'll make you a better man up team and a better man down team. See where that player caught the ball on the backside? He's a starting attacker for us. Division one recruit, nice player, sneaks, understands those understands how to get in there tight. Whereas you can see the righty on the backside is way back. And you wanna be in there as much as you can for that one timer. So here we've got a really cool drill that is a 5v4 with a crease man in a box. So you can see that we're moving the ball and the backside defenders have to get in. And this simulates the five-man rotations where the crease is open, whereas the other uh, five-on-four simulates a four-man rotation where the crease is locked. So here we're working on getting it inside as much as we can. But you can also work on your rotations here, and I recommend that you do that. So let's just say we've got this scenario right here. Carry, roll off, cut in. Out of, the, out of those three players, you can do that. How about if we did it out of these three players? Carry up, roll off, slide in. It's gonna be there 
in games, you can practice it in your five on fours. How about this one? Carry over, slide in, roll off. We can do it with those three players. And obviously we saw Notre Dame run the play behind where they carried behind, the low guy slid in, and the crease guy rolled off. Again, these motions are going to allow you to work on everything you need to work on while you're keeping it, the drills on the small sided level. It's going to make a big difference for you. So I hope you enjoyed this and I hope this helped you out because I believe that the key to man up, man down is less in the X's and the O's and more in the development of your players.